Shooting wind turbine, première. Oh, sorry. Didn't see you there. Just getting ready for swim season. We are going to paddle out to the next big wave of green energy. You forgot about the most righteous tools of renewable energy? Hello, we touched on wind turbines last season. It's all right, do not worry, because today we are going to build off that previous episode. And this time, we are focusing specifically on floating wind turbines. But before we start, subscribe below. Offshore wind power has undergone a period of spectacular growth and is now making a huge contribution to the global energy transition. That means bigger farms, bigger turbines, most of which are further out at sea. But why go through all the workout? I mean effort? For years, wind turbines have been installed in shallow water, close to the continent's coastlines. But as the demand for renewable energy increases, the energy industry explores into deeper waters, where wind is way stronger and more consistently available. This means more renewable energy for us consumers and less greenhouse emissions. Right on science. But to capture as much energy as possible, it was necessary for scientists to upscale their wind turbine technology. Nowadays, some floating wind turbines are almost as big as the Eiffel Tower or the Chrysler building. An average turbine generates around 7 to 10 megawatts, but a given floating wind farm is composed of larger turbines that, in due course, will reach power levels of approximately 20 megawatts. A single rotation provides enough energy for a household for two days. Imagine a 220 meter rotor and a 107 meter blade, a 600 ton nacelle, 160 tons for the three blades. This is heavy green machinery, people, and it all floats. To think, back in the 19th century, wind turbines were just bigger than the size of your average home. How they've grown! Now, there is no way these machines could be built on the seafloor. Well, they could, but it would be expensive really expensive. That's why these turbines are placed on stabilized platforms. These platforms are literally anchored to the bottom of the sea, hence the term floating wind turbines. This floating system poses technical challenges for the cables used to collect and export the energy from floating wind farms. With floating wind turbines, the energy is collected and exported by a dynamic subsea power cable system. These cables are designed to provide a high level of flexibility, enabling them to withstand the hydrodynamic movements and forces of the floating platform. Fiber optics may be incorporated as well, allowing for end-to-end -end communication that alerts operators when part of the cable is subject to failure or malfunction. Confusing so far? Don't worry, I've brought in an expert to help us out. Hello Maxime, can you hear me? Loud and clear, Frederic. Thanks for having me back. So, let's get right to it. Floating wind turbines may seem hard to construct, but actually they are easier to build than previous offshore wind farm designs. Really? How so? Well. For one, manufacturers can rely on their expertise from the oil and gas industry who develop floating platforms. Also, floating wind turbines can be installed without heavy lift vessels. The assembly can be performed at harbor and then the floating infrastructure is towed to destination, same with dismantles and repairs. The work can be done onshore and these land-based yards help to avoid the cost of specialist vessels. They also have better productivity, reduce the production time, 
and are one of many reasons why floating turbines have less environmental impact. Wow, thanks Maxime. Good to know. But how exactly is a turbine designed and installed? Well, actually the wind turbines are designed for the wind speed on the side. And this will govern the height of the turbine and also the diameter of the turbines. That truly is amazing. Can you tell us some specific examples? Sure, I would be happy to. Statoil, now called Equinor, was the first company to switch to floating wind farms in 2009. Check out their turbine, high wind demo, of the coast of the North Sea. That is huge! But eight years later, Equinor commissioned the first operational floating wind farm in the world, the High Wind Scotland Pilot Park project. Very cool! The first floating wind project in the EU was commissioned in late July 2020, off the coast of Portugal at a depth of 100 meters. And the most powerful floating wind turbine, a 9.5 megawatt, was installed in November 2020 in Rotterdam for the Kinkardine offshore wind project. Oh, are we done? Yeah, that's all. But if you ever need more information on wind energy, give me a call. Will do. So remember, floating wind farms use bigger turbines stationed on platforms. Although their system proposes some technical challenges for the electrical cables, their maintenance and repair are more accessible and eco-friendly. Overall, this system propels the shift toward green energy. So, do you have any maritime scientific advances that could propel us into a greener tomorrow? Leave a comment below. I'm Frederick from Nexons, and thanks for tuning into What's What, our channel all about electricity. Until next time, 